and two demons walked in my room. I was having sleep paralysis. One looked like a female, one looked like a male, but then the male got closer to me and he looked like my husband, which was my boyfriend at the time because we were living in fornication. And so I had open doors for these demons to try to attack me. And I remember screaming for dear life because the woman was holding my hand and the man was trying to rape me. The day I gave my life to Jesus Christ was the best day of my life. I remember sitting in the dark, crying out to a God who I did not know and asking him to help me. It was around the time where I was pregnant with my first son and my husband, Richard Lorenzo, was into a bunch of just witchcraft. You know, part of our testimony is that he was trying to find who God was. Part of my testimony is watching my husband, who was my boyfriend at the time, look day and night, search day and night for who God is. And it all started with us going to Haiti to perform a witchcraft ritual, um, a voodoo ritual, to find out who stole his package. And they came from trying to find out who stole his package. It resulted to finding Jesus Christ, um, which is the package, right? And so I went through a lot. I went through a lot because he wouldn't stop. He just kept going. Every week was a different religion. He studied all types of religion. Every week was something else. Every week he thought he knew who was the highest power. And there were so much witchcraft items in my house, crystals. There's just a bunch of things. I mean, crystals this high, which was almost my height, salt things in the corners, big necklaces from when he went to New Orleans of witchcraft. I mean, the pendulum crystal that goes around your neck trying to balance chakras, like so many, I'm talking about so many different type of witchcraft items that you could ever think of was in my house, all over my house. It was so crowded. I remember just feeling like I was suffocating. I wasn't able to breathe. I didn't know if I was going to go up or down, left and right. I mean, he even thought that I was doing witchcraft on him and I was the reason why these things were happening. I mean, he was being tormented, which um, which caused me to be in torment as well because I was around all of that. I remember even trying to, to, to kill myself a bunch of times and my baby, him kicking in me in my stomach is what caused me not to do that. I almost jumped out of a car once on the highway. I was just so lost, so gone, trying to just find peace and I couldn't find it. But God allowed all of that to happen so that I can find who is peace, which is Him. And I remember sleeping in my bed one time and two demons walked in my room. I was having sleep paralysis. One looked like a female, one looked like a male, but then the male got closer to me and he looked like my husband, which was my boyfriend at the time because we were living in fornication. And so I had open doors for these demons to try to attack me. And I remember screaming for dear life because the woman was holding my hand and the man was trying to rape me. And my boyfriend, who was my husband now, ran in like, what happened? And I'm just like, oh my gosh. And you know, and that kind of like shook me up like, okay, this is real, this is crazy, because at that point he was already saved and telling me to read the Bible and I'm looking at him like he's crazy and I didn't know who he was. You know, I was with him for a couple of years now and within, like, I'm talking about a day, he changed from a one, from one, a whole 180. He was one person, one moment, and the next moment when I went home, he was a totally different person. I did not recognize him. And so when that happened to me, when that sleep paralysis happened to me, I just said, you know what, I, I need to find truth. And I woke up, see, I used to ask, I used to speak to God, but I thought God was an alien. I didn't know who God was. I thought God was just a species. And I would ask him to abduct me, like abduct me. I don't want to be here. This world sucks. You know, I don't, fit, I don't fit in. I fit out of this world. I feel, I feel like I don't even belong in here. What am I doing here? Who are you? Show me who you are. And I remember waking up and just hearing my husband tell me in the back of my mind, read the Bible, read the Bible, read the Bible. I've never read a Bible a day in my life. And I picked up my phone. I went to the blue letter app Bible and I, I started reading Romans. And I didn't understand what I was reading because I was reading in KJV. And I, I'm like, I don't know what I'm reading. And as I'm reading, I got to a point where it was talking about sin and what sin is and how sin leads to death. And that there's one person who came to deliver us from sin. And because of him and what he did on that cross, I have a chance to be saved. And my heart sunk. 
my heart broke because at that moment I realized, oh my goodness, if I die, I'm gonna go to hell. I was thinking that I'm a great person, that I didn't kill anyone. I've, I've never tried to hurt anyone intentionally. I'm thinking I'm such, I'm, I'm a great person. I'm, I'm going to heaven. But reading the book of Romans made me realize that I'm not. I, I sinned against God. I was worshiping a false God. I was uh, committing adultery against them, living in fornication. I was lying, stealing, drinking, smoking. I had hatred in my heart for people. And that's like murder for God. And I just didn't understand that I was this horrible person, but with, with Jesus that I wasn't. And when I realized who Jesus really was, because I was Catholic. I used to go to the Catholic church every Sunday, but at the rest of the week, I would be sitting. It made, not, it made no difference. I used to be talking to this statue, imagining, thinking, why is the statue even here? I don't even know what the statue even represents. I don't even know if Jesus looks like that. But all I remember was that I saw him. I saw Jesus Christ. When it was talking about him dying on the cross for my sin, and that by what he did on that cross, I have been saved and redeemed, and I have a chance at eternal life. I actually understood that in my heart and received it and knew who he was, and I saw him. He appeared to me in the dark as a light. He appeared to me on the left side as a light. And I was like, who is this man? And I realized that it was Jesus Christ. And I gave my life to him. I surrendered my heart to him. And that's, that was the day that I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. And the feeling that I felt was the most love. I was so, I felt so loved, so safe, so secure. I felt like I can trust again. I felt like the only meaning for life was him. And it all happened in a split of a second. I just was able to open up my heart and receive it. And I'm here to tell you that if he could do that for me, he can do it for you. If you're lost, if you're not understanding why you're here, if you don't re understand what your purpose is, if you feel like you don't understand if somebody loves you, if you feel like you don't know where to go, where to place your head, you don't know if you're gonna be able to wake up in the, the next morning, or if there's even someone out there that loves you, who can possibly even loves you, or if you feel like you just don't belong here, I'm here to tell you that there is a purpose, and the purpose is for you to live for Jesus Christ. And I encourage you for you to look for him, seek him. It says, those who seek me, if they seek me with an open heart, they shall find me. If you search him with an open heart, you'll find him. That's what I did that night. And I found him at three o'clock in the morning. And he can find you anywhere around the world at any time. God bless you in Jesus' name.